Dr. A. Sharda here. Namaste, I am Dr. Priya Chinnappa. We are both from the Department of Endocrinology and Diabetes from Manipal Hospital, Miller's Road. Today being the World Diabetes Day, we are here to discuss what is new in diabetes and what are the updates in the drugs which are available for treating diabetes. So Dr. Priya, before we move on to drugs, what is this I hear very fashionable word reversal of diabetes is it possible yeah it's actually true a lot of patients uh, keep coming to my opd and asking me about reversal of diabetes uh, it is possible and there is a science behind it uh, what actually happens is over time and periods of excess calorie intake leads to fat deposition in the liver, decreased insulin sensitivity at that level, spill over to the pancreas and fat deposition in the pancreas and decrease insulin secretion which actually leads to diabetes. So is it possible to reverse the diabetes? Yes, so they believe the science behind it is the same process that causes the diabetes can be reversed by I said excess calorie intake. So a calorie deficit by eating a balanced low calorie diet and achieving weight loss they can actually achieve diabetes remission now actually it's better to use the word diabetes remission don't you think because um, using the word reversal patients might feel that they're cured of diabetes but they never actually achieve a cure it is only remission and they have to be careful because if they go back to old habits and regain the weight they can um, you know get diabetes again so they will have to be on a watch so basically we can reverse diabetes only in people who are obese not people who are already thin that's right exactly and i think that's very important for viewers to even understand that they need to lose a weight of at least 15 kilograms to achieve diabetes uh, remission now um, you know so that means somebody who's already thin they don't have the 15 kilograms to lose so they will not be able to achieve remission and this of course doesn't apply to type 1 diabetic patients. Now um, you know having stressed so much about weight loss and diabetic control of course lifestyle is important. Now what happens to patients who cannot achieve weight loss or diabetic control with lifestyle alone? Oh, that's very important because lifestyle that is healthy diet and regular physical activity is the cornerstone of type 2 diabetes management which is the commonest form of diabetes all over the world. But it is never sufficient. Hand in glove we will have to use medications many times and people who are obese there are two classes of medicines which we use. One is the SGLT2 inhibitor and the other one is the GLP-1 receptor analog. Are these uh, injectable or do we have tablets? Uh, that's an important question because a patient who is obese and has just developed diabetes, the, they are not very happy to take injections. GLP-1 analogs are available as injections also and recently peptide in a pill that is called ribelsis has been released which is the medicine inside called semaglutide which was available as injection before. So for the last 10 years we have liraglutide and dulaglutide which are both injectable medicine. Liraglutide is once daily injection and dulaglutide is once a week injection. But with this new pill which is available in India for the last 6 months patients are more happy to take the tablet instead of injection. Yes, definitely. I think that will really help and nobody likes to take injections and if they can substitute with the tablet, it's good. But uh, can you also tell us about this newer drug which was recently launched in the United States in May? I heard that's very effective for weight loss and for sugar control. Yeah, that's very important. That actually in addition to the GLP-1 analog, it has got a GIP receptor analog. So these two medications together is able to achieve better weight loss up to 11 kgs and also it can do better HbA1c control up to 2.4% reduction. This has been released in US like you said in uh, May 22 but it is not yet available in India but the other medications we are having here that is the GLP-1 receptor analogs are doing a great job including the oral pill and the SGLT2 inhibitor which is available as a tablet is also very effective 
in reducing the weight and controlling diabetes without causing low sugar. That's very good that now we have so many options for uh, obese patients with diabetes. Yeah. And moving on from obesity, one of the effects it has, obesity, is the fatty liver. So what is your uh, experience in patients who are having diabetes with liver disease, especially fatty liver? Yeah, I think that's the new epidemic, isn't it, this fatty liver? Because when we see patients who come with a routine health checkup, their master health checkup, a lot of patients are reported to have fatty liver and it is said that up about 20 to 50 percent of our diabetic patients in India actually have this fatty liver. That's a huge number, okay. you know. So how do you manage these patients? Yes, so in the beginning we look at their ultrasound findings and the blood test, the ALT is frequently elevated. Some patients may not have abnormal liver function tests uh, though they have fatty liver on the ultrasound. Now initially weight loss is very effective. At least a 5% uh, weight loss if patients are able to achieve they can be reassessed after 3 months and a lot of the fatty liver is uh, reversed. Now some patients unfortunately are not able to achieve it and they go on to develop inflammation and fibrosis which can uh, progress to cirrhosis. Apparently this is the most common cause of end-stage liver disease worldwide. This is non-alcoholic liver disease or fatty liver and uh, these patients are also uh, obviously advised to abstain from alcohol and if they have diabetes we control them with the usual medications that we have just discussed. Only when they go into end-stage liver disease, then we need to uh, stop the medications and put them on insulin. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, that's how the liver patients are managed. Now, frequently, you know, we hear about kidney disease and diabetes. Uh, can you tell us if kidney disease is diagnosed only with a high creatinine or can they have kidney disease with normal creatinine? Oh, that's a very interesting question because diabetic patients tend to have kidney problems especially if they have had uncontrolled diabetes and long term diabetes and there is a genetic that is the family history of diabetes with kidney disease in the family that's called diabetic kidney disease in the family. Like Dr. Priya just asked me we can have kidney problem in patients with diabetes with normal creatinine so and it, this can be easily diagnosed by doing a routine urine examination and looking at the protein leak. So if this protein leak is in fact the first indication of kidney problem in a diabetic and fortunately we are now having proven benefits of glucose lowering medications like SGLT2 inhibitors which can reverse the protein leak and also stop the progression to further development of diabetic kidney disease and kidney failure leading to increase in creatinine. Many of my patients are actually having good proteinuria has been uh, reversed or minimized and they are able to postpone the increase in the creatinine for many many years. Ah, that's very good. So early detection and monitoring for the proteinuria is uh, important. Now how do we manage the diabetes once the creatinine goes up? Okay, in the beginning like I said with only proteinuria, SGLT2 inhibitors are extremely good and the drug called metformin can also be safely used. But when the creatinine is a little up, they develop what is called mild to moderate liver failure. In that case, we can still use the SGLT2 inhibitors till the creatinine is manageable 1.4, 1.5 with a GFR of around 45 for some and 30 for some of the molecules and the GLP-1 analogs are also indicated up to a mild to moderate kidney problem only if the creatinine has increased to a stage of dialysis or the GFR is less than 30 to 15 then we need to use only insulin otherwise like in the liver disease initially we can use certain medications in people with diabetic kidney disease. In fact, it is beneficial for the kidney outcomes. So like in end-stage liver disease, end-stage renal disease, you need to go on insulin. But till such time, there are a lot of medications and they can actually benefit, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes. Yeah. Now, what about this heart failure? Because uh, in heart failure also, there is a lot of breathlessness and water retention, puffiness of face, swelling of legs, etc. 
in yeah. patients who have diabetes and heart failure any particular medications would you use yes actually this heart failure is a very important complication of diabetics and i think it's often unrecognized and it's the most frequent uh, reason for er uh, visits this heart failure and breathlessness now some of the medications that we discuss the sglt2 inhibitors really help patients with heart failure these drugs the way they work they bypass the pancreas and the liver but they act on the kidney and they decrease the glucose reabsorption so glucose is excreted and along with that water so the water retention and everything actually comes down so these drugs are even indicated for heart failure and it is found to reduce the readmission rate of heart failure patients um it is very interesting so can these drugs be used in patients who have heart failure without diabetes ah that's an excellent question and yes because earlier we used to use these drugs only for diabetic patients but they have they are indicated in patients with heart failure without diabetes because it helps in reducing the volume overload you know now that we've uh, spoken about heart failure some of these patients have had uh, angioplasties and uh, bypass surgeries Uh, with diabetes so how would we manage them so that is also an, a very important part because the patients who have diabetes are prone four times more to heart attacks than patients who do not have diabetes so we have to keep this in mind whenever we, we are seeing patients with diabetes i am not looking just at the glucose control that is an important part of my job but the most important part we need to be alive no to look after the <laughs> diabetes so the heart uh, problems are very important to look at the risk factors family history of heart problems smoking history their blood pressure their cholesterols that is called the abc we need to manage the a1c's the blood pressure and cholesterol and also look at the family history so these patients are supposed to have what is called atherosclerotic heart disease as opposed to heart failure which is a pump failure of the heart we have patients with atherosclerosis which is actually a pipe problem the blood vessels which are in the heart and the brain which supply our legs these are called the macrovascular problem they all get blocked over the years of diabetes blood pressure and high cholesterol and that is called atherosclerosis and for these patients especially in addition to diabetes control blood pressure control cholesterol control we prefer the glp1 receptor analogs which we have discussed in patients with obesity also because these molecules have shown that we can reduce the cardiovascular that is heart related mortality in the bypass patient or the angioplasty patient by about 22% and even the death due to all cause has also been shown to reduce in people with heart disease and diabetes if the patient cannot tolerate or use the glp1 receptor analog for any reason then we can also consider the sglt2 inhibitors which we discussed earlier this also has been shown to benefit this group of patients tremendously so i think what we are trying to say is you know once a diabetic patient walks into our clinic we need to first look at whether you know they need to lose weight or not and try to help them lose weight if lifestyle fails we give them certain medications like either glp1 agonist uh, the injectable or the oral or sglt2 which will help them lose weight and then once they develop certain complications we need to consider these medications again is that what you're trying to say that is true and like i said we have lot of evidence and in the last uh, decade we are looking at diabetic patient not at the sugar level and selecting the medicines all over the world we are looking at a patient with diabetes what are the other risk factors with the patient whether there is a kidney problem whether there is a heart problem or a heart failure and then trying to treat the patient as a whole so it is a lot of personalized medications and there is a big place in the armamentarium of diabetes first being metformin then we have weight neutral medicines like uh, dpp4 inhibitors which actually increase our own endogenous glp1 levels 
although they are not as effective as uh, GLP-1 receptor analogs, especially in weight loss because they do weight neutrality. But still they have a big place in the armamentarium. So each patient who comes to us needs personalized attention and looking at the entire spectrum of uh, problems in the patient and not look at just the glucose which was the approach a couple of decades ago and this has uh, taken a long way now and we all do risk management of the patient rather than just glucose control. Having said that diabetes control is of paramount importance but in addition other risk factors for heart disease, kidney problems, liver, fatty liver especially and obesity needs to be managed to have a very healthy, productive and long life. Thank you. Thank you.